All righty. Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. We are certainly glad to be here. Glad that you have uh, joined us. Uh, brought to you by Samaritan's Touch Homeless Services. And we are so glad to be here, be back after a trip, uh, some of which you're going to hear a little bit about in the lesson today. Because um, the title of the lesson today is, It Happens Only When We Listen. It Happens Only When We Listen. And so with that said, we're going to be in Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 1. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 1. It is from that that we will draw our strength today. The Morning Touch Sunday Live, coming right at you. Get your Bibles. Let's get ready to study the Word of God on this Lord's Day. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah 51.1, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock which ye have hewn, to the hole of the pit which ye are digged. You know, there's a lot to say in that one verse. You know, a lot of times people think that you've got to read the whole Bible to fully understand the will and the message of God. Now, while reading the whole Bible is a good thing, we can glean a lot of beautiful thoughts and directions for our lives simply with one or two verses. And the day is the day that you learn about a complete understanding from one verse. And in that one verse, in the book of Isaiah, to give you a little background, the children of Israel were rebellious. They were in danger of being carried off. They were in danger of losing everything that meant anything. All because of their rebellion. All because they wanted to go their own way. All because they wanted to turn their backs on Jehovah God. God, like so many opportunities, gives us an opportunity to right our ship. And in this case, it's no different. Before the judgment, before the chastisement, before God drops his judgment on Israel, he gives them an opportunity. And in a moment, we're going to find out why. But in this particular passage, he talks about the Lord will save his people. But before the Lord saves his people, he asks them to do four small things. God has never asked us for a great deal. He's never asked us for too much or more than we can do or handle. Four simple things is what God asked Israel. He says, listen, my people, I will save you, but I need you to do one thing. Hearken to me. Hearken to me. What does the word hearken mean? Hearken is a word that is a strong call to listen. It is a strong emphasis on paying attention. It is an appeal with intent. Hearken to me. God reaches out to his people who are in danger of losing it all. And he says, hearken to me. I simply want you to listen. If you listen, I will save you. You see, it happens only when we listen. The Lord will save his people. But he says, I need you to do four things. Number one, listen to me. Number two, he says in verse one, follow after righteousness. You know, all God wants for you and me is for us to do what's right. He does not encourage us to do wrong. He does not encourage us to engage in sin. 
God calls us to do what's right. Follow after righteousness. Seek the Lord. When we decide to follow righteousness, he tells Israel, seek my way. Seek my way. Stay on my path. Once you listen and you follow me, you take that step. Israel, I need you to seek my way and stay on the path. And then the fourth simple thing that God asked Israel was look to the Lord. Look to the Lord. It says, look to the rock which you are hewn, to the whole pit which you are dig. Listen, God simply says, go back and consider the creator. Go back and consider who made you. Go back and consider who maintains you and keeps you. Simply put, he told Israel, this is your recipe for success. This is your recipe for success. This is how you achieve my blessing. This is how you achieve, achieve my favor. This is how you know the way. Basically, Israel, this is what keeps you out of trouble. Israel constantly got in trouble because they sought their own way. We do the same. We get in trouble when we seek our own way. When we walk according to our own drummer. When we think that we know more than God. That was Israel's problem. But listen, blessing only happens when you listen. Care. Perseverance only happens when you listen. Protection only happens when you listen. We have to have the very favor of God in order, in order for us to thrive and prosper. Israel lost that because they refused. They were carried off into captivity and they had to suffer years upon years of trouble and trial, and death, and slavery, because they failed to follow the four simple ingredients. Listen, follow, seek, and look to the Lord's way. Well, in 2023, how does that differ from us? I'm going to tell you a little story. Like I said, we've been up in Tennessee for the past few weeks, monitoring the situation with my granddaughter where she suffered a life-threatening, violent car crash in Nashville that left her in a coma, not brain dead, but in a coma, barely, and on life support. And even to this day, she cannot breathe on her own without the machine. Even to this day, she is at the edge, the very edge of eternity. You say, well, brother, how old is she? 19. 19 when her life was staring her in the face, looking at her, so much promise, so many plans. But there was one little problem. She has chosen, while she was conscious, to live a life outside of Jesus. She made a conscious decision at 19. My own daughter spoke with her about Jesus. And she chose to go a different way. My own daughter encouraged her and talked to her. I even spoke with her. And the answer that we always got, I don't have time for that kind of stuff. I don't have time for that kind of stuff. What kind of stuff? You don't have time for church. You don't have time for God. You don't have time to read the Bible. And now, after the accident, you can't speak. You can't talk. You're in a coma. 
You're on the edge of eternity. But while you had time, you were doing everything you were big enough to do. And I'm talking about my granddaughter. This is my granddaughter. It hurts my heart to think that she rejected the Lord. And now she sits at the edge of eternity, unprepared to meet God at 19. And I ask you this, is all of whatever it is that you like to do or want to do worth what you're going to have to pay? It troubles my soul that if she wakes up in eternity, she's not prepared to meet God. And the very words which she spoke, I don't have time for that kind of stuff. She's going to have to think about those words for all eternity as she sits there and waits for the judgment of God. Think about that. 19 years on this earth made a decision. I don't need God. I'm not going to follow God. I'm going to do my own thing. Well, you've only done your own thing for just a few years. And now, in case and in line of those few years, you stand ready to be judged by a just God. 19. I say that to say this. All God asks us to do is to hearken, is to listen. The call to hearken was to Israel come back to God, worship him, follow him, Seek him. That is not a hard thing to do. And in today's world, Jesus makes the same appeal. Jesus simply says that he wants us to come unto him. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. It puts it like this. Come unto me. The appeal is for every man, woman, and child to come to him, not reject him, not say I don't have time for him, not walk away from him like he doesn't matter, not slap him in the face, not curse him out, not do your own thing. The call to hearken says come. Now I know that you have your distractions and I have mine. I know that the devil is busy trying to discourage you to do your own thing. I know that there are temptations out there that can overtake you. We live in a world full of sin. And I know that my granddaughter was tempted and she took the bite. She took the bait. That living right now and doing whatever you want to do, as big as you can do it, is the way to go. But my friends, that way has led to a hospital bed with life support where you can't breathe on your own because you said you didn't need God. When God removes his hand of protection from you, it's a dangerous thing. Because when he removes his hand of protection from you, the devil can have his way with you. Too many people have allowed the devil to convince them that they don't need God. She has done that, and she will pay that price. And it saddens my heart to think that she has a spiritual problem before God. None of us want to leave this earth with a spiritual problem. Because if you have a spiritual problem before God, you've got a real problem. And in this case, she has a spiritual problem. And that spiritual problem cannot be solved without the blood of Jesus. But the blood of Jesus is only available while you are breathing and while you are living and while you are making your decisions and living your life. When you cross over into eternity, there is no coming back. That is the sadness for my heart that her decision 
has condemned herself. Her decision created a spiritual problem. And her decision will result in God speaking those words that none of us want to hear. Depart from me. I know you not. Why, Lord? Depart from me. Because you said you didn't need me. Depart from me because you did not want to know me. Depart from me because you did not want to live for me. It's something that you don't want to hear. That's why the Lord even now says, hearken, hearken, listen, come to me. See him as the one and only Savior. Jesus simply says, Follow me, Matthew 16, 24. Just like Psalms 51, 1, the message is the same. It hasn't changed. He says, follow me, number one. Then he says, seek me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added unto you. My friends, we worry so much about making money, getting a good job, living a good life, doing whatever we're doing. But let me tell you something. If you put your hand in God's hand and you hearken and you follow him and you seek him, the Bible promises you that you will have all you need. I don't need a Tesla and I don't need a mansion on the hill because my mansion is being made and built in heaven and it's being built by Jesus. Too many of us worry about this life. This life is filled with sorrows and troubles here below. This life is full of pain and pressure and temptation and problems. This life is full of hassle. Why are you staking everything on this life when Jesus has said, I go to prepare a place for you? Why are you trying to live here forever when Jesus says, I'm coming back to receive you to myself? Hearken, my friends. Hearken today. Follow Jesus. Seek him. And then Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 sums it up. It says this. Look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Don't look to a friend. Don't look to a neighbor. Don't look to yourself. The Bible says depend on Jesus. Look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Why is that important? It's important today to look to Jesus because when you make a decision like my granddaughter made, when she told my daughter that, she, that God wasn't important, when she walked away and said, I don't have time for that stuff. Like so many people, I hear it every day. There are people here even in this place that say, I ain't got time for that Jesus stuff, that God stuff. Well, my friends, you're going to have plenty of time to think about it if you leave this life unprepared to meet the Lord. And I've got a granddaughter right now on life support that is unprepared to meet God. The greatest thing that I can do is to tell that story so that you will not make the same mistake and you will not go the same way. Because my friends, here's what Jesus says in John chapter 8, verses 23 and 24. He says, if you die in your sin, where I am, you cannot come. That perhaps is the most eye-opening awakening scripture in the Bible. We all are going to die. The Bible says that a point another man wants to die and after this the judgment. Hebrews 9 27. Behind that the most sobering thought is Jesus says if you cross the eternal line of death and you are unprepared to see me then I won't see you. If you're unprepared to see me, then I won't know you. And that, my friends, is the most saddest thing. So many people are wasting their lives 
They're throwing it all away for 20 years, 30 years of fun and frolic. But I ask you, with no day promised, what difference and what sense does that make? Jesus said, if you die in your sins, where I am, you cannot come. Salvation and peace happens when we listen. You see, the devil is a roaring lion. He convinced my granddaughter, you got time. He convinced my granddaughter, live your life to the fullest. He convinced my granddaughter, it's you. It's all about you. You are beautiful. You are pretty. You can have anything you want in life. He convinced her of that. And now she lays in a coma with her hair cut off and all these tubes in her mouth. My friends, the devil will lie to you. The devil will not tell you the truth. Why are we so inclined to believe him when he is a liar? Jesus Christ, John 8, 44, called him a liar. Why do we believe this liar? Why do we endanger our souls listening to a liar? My friends, hearken unto me. Good things happen only when we listen. We must look to Jesus. It is urgent because the distractions of the world are everywhere. You know, 1 John 2, 15 and 17 says this. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. What's in the world? Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. So many of us are swimming in those pools. So many of us are living those kinds of lives. Just like my granddaughter who chose to live outside of the body of Christ. It is important that we understand the value of living for Jesus. Distractions are everywhere. So this message is urgent. It is urgent. And I issue it in urgency that change must be made. The call to hearken is an urgent call. And that call says, come to Jesus. See his face in a good way. Face him so that he may know you. Understand that it is only in him that salvation comes. John 14, 6 and Acts 4 and 12. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. And then number two, there is no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. It is time for us to lay aside our foolish thoughts before you end up like my granddaughter. Relief and release only happens when we listen. Don't spurn the invitation. Don't turn your back on opportunity to change. Don't be like Israel and be taken off into captivity because you failed to listen. Hearken. It only happens. Good things only happen when we listen. What can God do? Number one, he can turn that which is ugly, beautiful. He can take that which is useless and make it useful. He can take what's ignored and unimportant and make it valuable, my friends. Your soul is valuable and it is time you take that serious. It's more valuable than money. It's more valuable than a new car. It's more valuable than a new home. Now is the time for you to take your soul seriously and hearken and listen. Because my friends, only Jesus can change your life. My granddaughter will never say another word. She will not get the opportunity to repent. She can't turn back the hands of time to that moment when she flew through that windshield and hit that brick mailbox. She cannot turn any of that back. And now she lays 
with a spiritual problem facing the very judgment of God. This is an appeal to you not to put yourself in that situation. Nothing is more valuable than a relationship with God. Nothing is more valuable and secure than knowing Jesus Christ. Nothing is greater than answering the urgent call to change your life, change your heart, change your direction, come to the Lord. Nothing, and I mean nothing, is more important. But it only happens when you listen. I hope, trust, and pray that this lesson has been an eye-opener. I want you to know, if you're out there, Jesus can change your life. He can give you peace. He can restore your hope. He offers you joy. But it only happens when you listen. God bless you. God keep you. And I hope, trust, and pray that you have been encouraged by this lesson. To listen. Israel didn't listen. My granddaughter didn't listen. She chose to be stubborn and rebellious. And now she faces an eternal problem. A spiritual problem. You have the opportunity to learn from her mistake. And not follow the same path. I appeal unto you like God appealed to Israel. I appeal unto you like Jesus appealed to his generation. I appeal to the generation of 2023. Hearken, hearken, hearken before it's everlasting too late. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you again next time on The Morning Touch Sunday Live. God bless you.